this is um, old sand dune here. It mm. doesn't look like it, but this particular part of the farm is deep black sand. So there must have been a point when the river was probably wider, and then it dried out, and then all the sand blew up. Microcerus lanceolata, which we've been growing in the top corner there, and we've just transplanted them out into this garden yesterday. Um, Scapagera there, more Scapagera, more lanceolata. This is, these ones here, plants that we've only had in for 18 months. These are a vanilla lily. In the other garden is chocolate lily. Um, you know, we've been getting really good yields off these in terms of the tubers. But one, the first thing over the last couple of years was to collect seed so that we could grow tube stock and give it away to other Aboriginal communities. But these are going really well. They, they create their own weed mat. You know, they, they end up with a rosette like that one there. Little village up the back there with accommodation and a, a lunchroom and a bit of a kitchen, um, plus some tiny houses where all, all our guests stay. Um, you know, we've just had a, a group of land care people who paid to come around and look at the farm. Oh, they're there for just the house, but the lads are harvesting Warrigal Greens and Kunjin Winyu down on the river flat. Oh, okay, I'll just take my shoes off. CSIRO doing a test um, for us. Oh, that's a flower. Yeah. Of what we call um, Gavada Nawa. Are those grasses, you know, creating a flower like that, are going to be important for the, the agriculture too because you don't need to plough or fertilise or water, you know. And you don't need nearly as much diesel to... Well... You know, if you're not doing those <coughs> tractor-driven processes... Well, a, a, a mate of mine who uh, started out at about the same time as me, um, he, um, he used to dra drag around these big ploughs, and um, so his tractor was big. And he's downsized his tractor every three years. He's now got a tractor no bigger than mine, 50 horsepower. He had them 300 horsepower and stuff, you know, just to drag those massive ploughs. He doesn't plough anymore. And, you know, so there's less machinery weight on the ground and, um, as you say, less diesel. We don't use a lot of diesel on this place, you know. Uh, we, we buy our diesel in drums. Um, and because we do that, we don't get a, a diesel excise. But, to get a diesel excise, we'd have to have a big tank, and you know, it's just a bit of a fiddle. And anyway, I'm hoping that one government will ban that diesel excise anyway. Uh, that's a, a bounty that you get for so many hundred litres of diesel used. Um, the farmers get a discount. I don't think they should. There's so little work being done. Such an important plant, that yam daisy. Um, and so little work been done on it. And on the lilies, none. Virtually no um, scientific papers on the vanilla lily. Um, I know people who have been growing them. And um, for years, you know, for the flower, because it's a very pretty flower. And um, I just got a garden fork and they said, don't dig it up. And I said, that, you know. Then I showed them the tubers and put it back in the ground. I said, eat, eat the tuber. It's absolutely delicious. Now, you know, better, better raw than cooked. We should be looking at the true cost of production, and that there, there should be an environmental cost attached to it as well. And that's why I, I love these plants, you know, because they're going to show farmers that they can 
have an income without uh, destroying the earth. <laughs>